Hi, this is Amit Kirti here. Uh, in this video, I would like to talk about breadfast search algorithm. The items for discussion are the breadfast search algorithm introduction, breadfast search algorithm example, breadfast search algorithm itself, and then we will analyze the breadfast search algorithm using the same example that we discuss in two. Now, breadfast search uh, algorithm is an algorithm for traversing a graph in search of a particular element. To put it in one line, uh, breadfast search algorithm is an algorithm which does the following. Uh, to search a node, it searches its immediate children. If the element is found, then we are done. Or we pick each element and find its children again and then we continue so on till we actually find out the element or we are done with the graph. Now basically breadfast al uh, search algorithms main application is to find connectivity of a graph. Suppose you have a graph which has say n vertices. We want to figure out whether the, all the vertices are connected into a single graph or they are disjoint and they are actually part of two different subgraphs of the main graph. Now let's take this particular graph and try to do a breadfast search for this particular graph. So let's start with any vertex. So let's pick A as our starting vertex. So what we actually have to do is with A as a starting vertex, we will list down all the children of A. So in this case, the children of A will be C, D and E. So for A, I will list down the elements as D, C and E. Then I have to start checking from each of the children. So I will start with D first and then list out all its children. So if you look at D, there are only two possibilities for D. One is C and the other is A. And if you look at our depth first search graph, C and A are already listed in this. So there is nobody else to go other than going back to A. So we are done with D. We move on to the next child of A. So in this case, the next child of A is C. So we go to C and then try to list out all its children. Now, again, if you see the vertex C, then you will see that the A and B are already present in the graph and the only child which is not present is F. So we will list down F under C, making it the child of C. Then we move on to the next word child of A that is E. And from E, we try to list out all its children. One of them is A, which is already there in our tree. The other one is F, which is already there in the tree. And the only one which is not present is B. So we will add B under E. So we are done with E as well. Then we go to the next level. That is the next child, which is F. And from F, there are three possibilities. Either we go to C, E or B. If you look at the graph, all of them have been added into this particular tree, spanning tree. So we have nowhere to go. So we will just add dotted lines from F to E and B. So with F we are done. And then similarly with B also we are done because from B the only places I can go is F and E which are already present in this tree. So this particular tree uh, or the spanning tree is the depth first search tree which has connected all the vertices and if we were searching for b we would have found out b by this time and if the element did not exist we would not have found the element now breadth first search is generally implemented as a queue so what will happen is if i start with any particular vertex say a i will add a into the queue then what i do is all the children of a are added into the queue so in this case it will be d c and e so they all get added to the queue and then I will drop A because I am done with A. Now we pick the next element from the queue which is D and add all its children. Since the children of D are A and C and A we have already finished with it and C is already present in the queue. So there is nothing much D can do. So D just goes off. Then the next child in front of the queue is C. So from C again there are three possibilities A, B and F. A, D are already done. So the only guy left is F. So we will add F and then C just drops off from the queue. Next element 
that is present in the queue is E. So from E, I have possibilities of A, F and B. But A and F are already done. So the only guy which is not present in the queue or ever has ever added to the queue is B. So we will add B to the queue and then E drops off. Then the front guy happens to be F and from F there are only three possibilities C, E and B and we have encountered C, E and B at one point or the other. So there is nothing much F can do. F simply drops off and then we finally have B. From B we can only go to F and E and they have already been uh, added to the queue once before. So we will just drop off B. So breakfast search is generally implemented as a queue where the children get added at the back of the queue and the parent gets dropped off from the front of the queue. Now another example from Wikipedia that I picked up, it goes slightly fast. So probably you might miss out some things. So this is the graph. So it starts with A, it adds its children B, C, from B it goes to D, E, then from C to F, G, then E to H, then finally it shows all of them as visited. Now this is the algorithm for, for breakfast search. So in the algorithm, there are two parts. The part one of the algorithm tries to find out all the subgraphs or it finally makes the forest of trees if the graph is disjoint. If the graph is joined, then this would get called only once. This particular algorithm will call a function called breakfast search whose job is to create the tree. So let's see what the algorithm does. We will take this example where I have two disjoint uh, subgraphs of this graph. One, one is this inner one, the other one is the outer one which are not joined at any point. I, I list down all the vertices of the graph and then it says mark each vertex in V as 0. So I have marked all of them as 0. I set a variable called count to 0. Then what I do is for each vertex here, if I find any vertex which is marked as 0, in this case, let's say I start with A and A is marked as 0. I call breakfast search of 0, uh, sorry, breakfast search of A. So the function gets called, I increment the count, I make the count as 1 and I mark this vertex A with this count value and then I add it to, a, to the queue. So what I do, I mark A with 1 and then I add him into the queue. Then I enter into this while loop where what do I do? I check till the queue is not empty. Yes, the queue is not empty because there is an element A. Then what do I do for each vertex W which which is not added in the queue that is these vertices C, D, E, F, B, G, H, J and I. I check who is adjacent to A. So what do I do? Find the vertex adjacent to the front vertex. So adjacent to A, first I will check C is adjacent to A, right? So C is adjacent to A. What do I do? If it is marked with 0, yes, C is marked with 0. What do I do? I increment the count. So count now becomes 2 and I add W to the queue. So C is next to A. I make the count to 2 and then I add C to the graph. Uh, so, uh, sorry, C to the queue. So once C, C is added, I again go up in the for loop and I check the next vertex W which is adjacent to A. Who is in the next vertex adjacent to W? D. So what do I do? I pick D. And then count is incremented. So count becomes, so I have picked D and the count becomes 3. And then I add D to the queue. So D gets added. So the second child of A is also added to the queue. Then I go up again in the for loop. I check the next W which is 0 and adjacent to A. The, the only leftover guy is E who is 0 and he is also adjacent to A. So I choose E. I make it 4, I increment the count and then I add him to the queue. Then what do I do? Again go up in the for loop and check is there anybody left who is a child of A or who is connected to A and he is still 0, there is nobody else. So what do I do? I drop A. Then, uh, then again I will go up and check while the queue is empty. So uh, the queue is not empty because there are 3 elements. So I pick the first element that is C. And from C, 
I will check each vertex adjacent to C, whoever is adjacent to C and not marked with 0. Now adjacent to C are A, D and F. But A and D are already marked as 1 and 3 and F is the only guy who is marked with 0. So what do I do? I pick F, I increment the count. I pick F, I increment the count and make it to 5 and then I add F to the Q, that is add W to the Q. Then I go up in the for loop again and then I check is there anybody adjacent to C again left over? There is nobody else. So we are done with C. So C just, re we remove it from the front of the Q, so C has got, got dropped off. And then we will again go up in the while loop and check whether the Q is empty. The Q is not empty because there is D. So I check who are adjacent to D. Now adjacent to D are A and C, but they are not marked with 0. So we enter in this for loop only if they are marked with 0. Since um, nobody is marked with 0 who is adjacent to D, I just drop off D. Then the next guy is E. So for each vertex adjacent to E, so who, who is adjacent to E? A, F and B. But A and F are already marked with some number and the only guy who is not marked is B. So what do we do? We increment the count for uh, to make it 6. So B is chosen. We make the value as 6 and we add B into the queue. So we add it into the queue and then again I go up and check is there anybody left who is adjacent to E and who has marked with 0. Since all are covered, E just drops off. Then we have F and from F I can go to only 3 nodes and all have been covered that is C, E and B. So C, E and B have been covered. So there is nobody else left over from F. So F gets dropped off. Then the guy left over is B. From B I can only go to F and E and both have been visited so I can't go any further. So from B there is nobody else left so I drop off from B. So once I do this, I go and check again while the queue is not empty. Queue is already empty, right? There is nobody else. So what do I do? I come out of this while loop. So once I come out of this while loop, there is no other statement to execute. So what do I do? I go back from here into the breadth first search algorithm. So when I go back from here, I was in this for loop and I had started with breadth first search of A. So I had started with A, then I go to the next vertex, I check is it marked with 0, C is not marked with 0, so C has been visited, is D marked with 0, no D has been not marked with 0, neither is E, nor F, nor B. Then we come to one vertex called G, which is actually marked with 0, so there is, this condition holds good, so I will call breadth search for G. So I will enter into this function with G as my starting vertex. I increment the count and then I mark this count with the new value and then I will put it in the queue. So G is the new guy who has been added in the queue. Then we enter this while loop again where we check is the queue empty. Queue is not empty because we have added G just now. Then for each vertex adjacent to G, who is adjacent to G? H and J. So what do we do? We pick one of the vertex. Let's, let's assume we pick H. What do we do? We increment the count. So count becomes 8 and then we add H whose count has become 8 into the queue. We go up again in the loop and then we check the next guy adjacent is J. So G's next adjacent guy is J. So we and it is marked with 0. So what do we do? We increment the count. So count becomes 9 and then we add J to the queue. Then we go up in the for loop again and check is there anybody else adjacent to G. There is nobody else adjacent to G other than H and J. So you can see it here. G's adjacent guy is either H or J. So there is nobody else adjacent. So G drops off. So G's job is done. The next guy in the queue in front is we go here and we check while the queue is not empty. Yes, queue is not empty. So next vertex which is adjacent to H. So who is adjacent to H? that is i. So from h I can go to i. So what do I do? And i is marked with 0. So I increment the count. So count becomes 10. I assign it to i and then I add i to the queue. Then I drop off h because there is nobody else next to h. So h gets dropped off. 
then I go up and I check is the queue empty? No, there is still J. So from J, I try to find out is there any vertex that I can go to. The only vertices that I can go to are G and I and then they are not marked with 0. So I cannot do anything other than dropping off J from the queue. So I am done with J. Next I check with I, is there anybody next to I? There are two guys H and J, but H and J are already visited. So there is nobody next to I. So what we do? We remove I from the queue. So once we done, we are done with this while loop, there is nobody else left in the queue. So while the queue is not empty is false. So we will come out of this breadth search function and go back to BFS. And then we will again check, is there anybody marked with zero? Since nobody is marked with zero, we are actually done with parsing all the vertices in, the, in this particular uh, graph. So what do we get? We actually get one subgraph which is breadth first searched in this way and we get another subgraph which is breadth first searched in this way. So we get two subgraphs using breadth first search and we, if we were trying to actually find out whether i is present in the graph then we will actually have to complete the whole process to finally figure out that yes i is present. And if our aim was to figure out if the graph is joint or disjoint graph, then we will actually come to a conclusion that it is disjoint. If we have one count value here to check how many times breadth first search gets called. So if it gets called more than once, then breadth first search has been called say twice. That means there are two subgraphs in this particular graph. This shows that the graph is disjointed. So this is one particular application of, of, the, 